She's a legendary recording artist and a Tony award-winning actress who has introduced many people into the music business. Her name is Melba Moore. Her original name is Beatrice Smith. And we're here today to talk to her about her career and lots of other things. How are you today? I'm greatly. Thanks it's for having me. Oh, I'm glad to have you here today. Um, I want to open up right now to talk about Whitney Houston because you attended the service yes. and um, had had an opportunity to work with uh, Sissy and, and Dion over the years and many yes. other people uh, that were in attendance. Yes. Uh, what was your feeling about that service? I was very grateful for it because um, it put closure because uh, I was home cuddling with my daughter when we got the news. It was just like somebody just stabbed me in my heart. We, we couldn't even speak. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, I just didn't know what to think. I didn't want to listen to the news. Um, uh, I'm a dear friend of uh, uh, Sissy and Dion, but I'm not a close member of the family. Right. And I just didn't want my thoughts to run rampant. I didn't want to grieve unnecessarily. And I knew my daughter would, would start grieving too. So we just were, were quiet. So. To be at the service, to be included with friends and family, sure. meant everything to me. And um, as I saw Dion, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I thought the service was um, excellent. It was uh, dignified. It was the way a Christian service should be, orderly and um, brilliant. And I was particularly proud of uh, Dion because I knew she had to have been grieving so much could even hear it in her voice. It sounded to me, knowing the voice, as though she had probably been crying an awful lot. But she uh, had a smile on her face, and because we know it's not because she was happy, she was giving us the look of of peace and gentility and, and calmness, so that we we would be that way too. I was very proud of how she conducted the the, uh, the service. It's her part of it. Uh, Can I give some kudos to Curtis Farrell? Oh man, <laughs> yes. Uh, he... Now the gentleman, y'all don't know who he is, but he, I, I met Sissy actually doing the McDonald's Fest, where I've, I had some of my first opportunities to perform gospel with the great Sissy Houston. I'll cry again. <laughs> and Curtis put these events on, and I saw him. I, that's why I really admire directors because they have the overview and they can. They, yeah. They, you know, Curtis was. He is now the music uh, minister at. Uh, yeah, he's a minister the of music. And so he really organized that whole thing. But Dion is no slouch. I've done some events that she put on. People don't know that she's a great event planner and producer, mm -hmm. as well as great entrepreneur. So I wanted to say that much before we talk about her voice, okay? Uh, what's interesting as well is uh, it was a musical service. And there were speeches, there were, there were tributes, and they were beautiful. But the people that uh, really touched me, everyone did, but who really touched me was uh, the music and the fact that Stevie Wonder and Alicia Keys and uh, the Winans and R. Kelly and so many people came out and just gave a musical tribute. As a musician, that's probably what Whitney would have wanted. Well, uh, Dion, as she announced them, said these are the people, don't forget Kim Burrell, I mean, you know, geniuses, these are the people that she favored and she loved. It was her choices. Yes. So we got to enjoy some of... Um, the, the results of, of Whitney's personal choices and some of the geniuses of music today. Yeah. And I, I don't want to, we've had so much talk about um, the struggle that Whitney had. And the only question that I'll have uh, about that is about sudden fame and how that affects young women when they're in the entertainment industry. Um, what are some of the pressures that young women face? You, you know, I'm just observing Whitney, I, I would say her, her main problem was she was prepared for sudden fame, but not sustenance. Mm -hmm. How do you do it when, now you're coming into middle age when the industry starts to throw you away or kind of put you aside? You, you, f forget the industry. What about your, your, your life? You, you need, you know, we've come back to the church if we weren't in the church because we need spiritual guidance. Right. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter what your talent is, you can't survive it. That's my opinion. You're someone who started out as a music educator yeah. um, early before people knew you back in your Beatrice days. <laughs> yes. Uh, Miss Smith. <laughs> and you taught kids in the schools. Public schools in Newark, yes. And you put a lot of emphasis on voice, and I certainly want to talk about the voice. You know, the last Whitney Houston question is to talk about the significance of uh, her voice, that voice, especially relative to her mother's voice. 
Uh, well, my mother was a singer too, so I, I listened to her and to Sissy and to Dion and, and hear the family resemblance. And then, of course, I'm jealous. <laughs> 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 but uh, there was an, an, a natural gift in all of them. Of course, they, they developed it. Whitney could sing here like I'm talking, but she could sing up there like I'm talking. We, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, vocalists know that that's the chest voice. And she also sang, uh, you know, soft, you know, we call it falsetto. Voice. Right. Uh, but the, the range was very strong from bottom to top. And if it was riffing or solid or whatever. And, and it, it, I've seen her when she's on tour. And I think part of what happened, she burnt out because she was stronger than she knew she was. Okay. And that's just a natural gift, but there are things, you know, of course you can do to, to make it stronger and, and to, um, we normally have a gap between the bottom and the, and the top, right in the middle there, to bridge that gap. The vocalists will know what I'm talking about. Well, a lot of vocalists might not know what you're talking about because so many people have the talent, but you have to take care of your voice as we spoke about earlier. And that's something entirely different, <laughs> things like right. warming up for a while. How long but do you warm up? Uh, I don't warm up anymore because I, I, I live like an athlete. Okay. I stay warm. Hey! You know? Right. And I'm going to ask I'm you not to warm hit that yet. note. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so what do you do to take okay, care of your Okay, well, uh, no more fried chicken. <laughs> 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 no more fried anything. No more ice cream. <laughs> Dairy is very bad for singers. Most everybody. Um, Primarily not, you know, potatoes, uh, starch, pasta is really not good for most of us. Um, a, a lot of processed sugar, if you want to have something sweet, have, have uh, fresh fruit. And as I hear you, you talking, I have to go back and think about when you told me that your voice is actually mm -hmm. the best that it's ever been. Yes, getting better. Why is that? Because of the whole lifestyle. Okay. I don't warm up so much as I did before because I don't get down so low because, you know, I don't drink or smoke or anything, right. or anything that I used to do. I don't do that anymore. And um, when you and think... I, when I do drink, I'm not, I could give you this, my secret is apple juice. Okay. <laughs> well, there's pectin, there's vitamin C, there's a lot of things in an apple. We used to say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. It really is true. Um, one of the things that, uh, the many things that you're loved for, of the many things you're loved for as a vocalist, one of the things uh, is that ability to hold a note so long and the song Lean On Me. You say you, you held that note for how long? I don't know. If, I told you 32 seconds. It might have been 23 seconds. Okay. Well, that's still a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. Um, and, <laughs> but I asked you if you could still do it, and you told me that you could hold a note for a really long time, but you thought that it bored audiences. Well, no, I don't mean in general. I mean, if you do anything all the time, they get bored. I'm okay. saying and after a while, I, I, you know, when it was developing, because it wasn't always there, uh -huh. I would hold it, and then I would say, I'm starting to fall asleep. <laughs> I said, okay, that's too long, okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so can you hit one for me? Let me see. G I go down, I can hold it longer. My goodness, what a talent. Uh, what I noticed about that was that it got stronger. It wasn't like you were running out of air. Yeah. You must have been saving air to really make that boost. Well, you or how did you it do that? After you learned how it works. <laughs> and you were breathing from where? Where were you getting your breath from? Right? I take a very, very, I, I never, no, I don't quite know how that works. Okay. I just know, because, I'll tell you why I don't know why. Because I work the whole body. I work out. So everything is like if I have a crook or something in my back or something or my thighs, I stretch that out and everything so that when I do it, it's from my spirit, I think, from the, I take as deep a deep breath I can and then I place it somewhere, I don't quite know where. So then when I'm holding it, I'm actually resting. Oh my goodness. Because there's a difference between trying to do something and allowing the Lord to, to do it with your help. There's a different energy. Right. So when you place it, 
take all the, the stress in taking it in, then you find a place to rest, and then it kind of d does it itself. You came into um, to, to prominence in 1967, um, and that, then you, you won the Tony Award. You were the first African-American uh, to replace a white person on Broadway, and that was Diane Keaton. Right. Um, th to, so to say that your, your, your voice is as strong as it's ever been, it wasn't this strong before. Unbelievable. And now I got bottom, see, because I'm grown. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get older, your vocal cords get thicker too. But I haven't lost the top, and the top is growing. Tell me about your experience, because I see you really as the bridge between the Ellas and the Lena Horns and uh, those great voices and th some of the, the, the mainstream voices that came later, Beyonce Knowles and Whitney Houston, who we just talked about. What was your experience like? back then? Uh, well, I, I didn't think I was going to be an actor. I never thought about it, but I, I was doing backup uh, session work. As a matter of fact, I had met uh, Valerie Simpson around the, those times, and she got me involved with studio work. And on one of the recording sessions, I got my first play, which was Hair. But Hair, for me, first of all, I didn't audition for it, so I didn't, I didn't know how to audition. But So I'm just saying, you got sucked up into something that was kind of a laboratory where you could learn on the job. Mm -hmm. And so when Diane left and, and the producers and directors said, well, we're going to put the, the role up for anybody who wants to try it. I said, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, it was like that. I want to just really quick as a last question, get you to talk about your new project and what you're doing now. Well, I have a new song. It's a ballad. Um, it's an R&B ballad, but now that I'm born again, everything's going to be inspiration. I can't help it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's called Love Is. And uh, the title of the album is tentatively anyway forevermore because it's kind of a comeback album for me again and it's going to be R&B and then hopefully after that I will do some more gospel continuing throughout my life mm -hmm. but um, we're, we're getting ready to go into the studio now to begin the whole project I've just got the one single done so far and what a profound thing for you to um, be someone that's singing gospel music now <laughs> uh, which is a different experience uh, for <laughs> A lot of singers come out of the church, right. you know, the great right. singers uh, that would be considered uh, your peers, right. Aretha Franklin, and so many other people got their feeling from the church. Right. Last question, where did you get yours from? Uh, you I, th I think out? from my mother, because she was a professional singer, and she always told me, she says, I don't care uh, how well you sing if you don't move people. If you, she said every singer has to be an actor, and I don't think she meant that they necessarily could act, but they must tell the story. And you... You come in here as classy and dignified and <laughs> elegant as ever. I want to thank you so much, Melba Moore, <laughs> thank you. for coming in to talk to us today. Thank you.